What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, you know I appreciate it. All that information is in the description box below. Make sure you go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks. Subscribe over there and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now let's get into this topic. All right, now this story comes out of Indianapolis, but before I get into this story, let me give a shout out to our first responders because just reviewing this case made me really think about the paramedics and the police officers, the people who show up on, you know, scenes like this that are so horrific. And you know all you all know I'm a big advocate for mental health and getting counseling and all that type of stuff, and you all have to think our first responders, this is their job. I mean, every day you never know what's going to happen. So I, you know, I'm sending good vibes and everything out to all of our first responders, even the police officers uh, who watch my show. Uh, I see some of you down in the comment and they let me know, Dawson, I'm out here patrolling the area. Also, the nurses and the paramedics and the rest of you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Janitrius Moore worked hard at a beauty supply shop to support herself and her two girls and was appreciative for the most recent $1,400 stimulus check issued to help Americans recover from the pandemic. The father of her youngest baby, Malik Halfacre, thought he should get half of her money. Janitrius told Malik, you don't deserve any of this. I work. I take care of our child. You do nothing. He said, I really want half. She said, I'll give you $450, take it or leave it. He said, I'm going to get that money, according to witnesses' account. According to police documents, Malik Halfacre returned to Janitrius Moore's home the next day, and they began to argue over the money. When a family member tried to intervene to de-escalate the situation, that's when Malik Halfacre opened fire. Now I'm going to let you all watch this clip, and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. And you all know me, I'm Dawson, and I won't hold back. Thanks for inviting us in. We learned today that a stimulus check may have been the motive behind last weekend's shooting that left four people dead, including a seven-year-old girl. Tonight, Steve Jefferson is learning what the alleged shooter told police, and we're also hearing tonight from the man who rescued that sole shooting survivor. The lone survival of the shooting here at the house took off running and ran southbound here on Randolph, where she got the help she needed. And I talked to her. And she, she was shot. I said, oh my God, you've been shot. Craig Jackson showed us how he came to the aid of shooting victims. The only survivor from gunfire that claimed four of her loved ones. Moore escaped to Jackson's front porch where they waited for police together. What you doing? You, you squat down and I'm going to squat down with you and I'm going to talk to you. I'm on the phone with the police. Tell them. I need some assistance. In court documents, Malik Halfacre reportedly admitted he and Moore argued because he wanted some of her stimulus check and admitted to shooting all of the deceased individuals in the house, taking money and her car. Halfacre also told police, according to court documents, after the shooting, he dropped off his daughter and walked to his friend's house. That's where SWAT officers convinced him to surrender after an intense standoff. Now, Jackson hopes to reunite with Moore just to give her more support. I would love to, to meet her, to talk to her, to give her my condolences because she said she uh, uh, wants to do a GoFundMe. And I told her I'm more than willing to help her with the GoFundMe to assist her at the funeral for her loved ones. Malik Halfacre is scheduled for his initial hearing on March 18th for the shooting that happened here on Randolph Street. Thank you, Steve. This is the second mass shooting here in Indianapolis. Within just the last two months, both of them are considered domestic violence. Hey, you remember back in late January, six family members were killed and a 15-year-old boy injured in that shooting on the northeast side of Indy. 17-year-old Raymond Childs is accused of killing his own parents, sister, brother, brother's girlfriend, and an unborn nephew. And the little brother who survived later told investigators that Childs started shooting because he was upset with his parents. His trial is now set for this April. All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, first of all, I want to send my condolences to the family and friends of these victims. This is a horrible situation, and they are going to need a lot of support. And also to Janetrius Moore, um, I'm wishing you uh, healing, a speedy recovery, 
And um, she's going to need counseling after this. This is just, this is horrible. This is a horrible situation. And her youngest baby, the baby she has with Malik Halfacre, is doing well. Now, the social worker is going to come out now. So let me say this first to Malik Halfacre. You're going to get what's coming to you. Justice will be served on behalf of those victims and also uh, Miss uh, Janetrius Moore. I'm not worried about that. Uh, Malik Halfacre could not get half half a job. He uh, has half a brain. He's been half assing it through life. And people like him feel that they are entitled to get something for doing nothing. You all heard in the beginning of this video, I told you that Janetrius told him that, okay, I will give you a, a $450. Just basically get out of my face. Leave me alone. She was telling this man, you do nothing. Or what's that poem? You have been of no assistance. That's a good poem. I, I heard some girl do that in theater class one time you have been no assistance to me in this child she told him I have to work at the beauty supply store you don't deserve this money but to get you out of my face I'll give you $450 that wasn't good enough so for you Mr. Half Acre you will get what's coming to you I don't doubt that at all now let me also say this Janetrius Moore did not owe you $450. She didn't have to give you anything, especially when she's taking care of her child. And I really feel so passionate about this because you all know I'm a social worker and I see this all the time when the kids are staying with the mother and the father doesn't help or they're staying with the father and the mother does nothing. She doesn't help or they're staying with guardians, you know, grandma aunties and uncles who take care of your children while you run the streets you don't do anything but like a groundhog when it's tax season oh here you come peeking out your hole like a go it's groundhog day oh they coming around they want some money but you're not there when the child has to go to the doctor you're not there when there are pta meetings you're not there when the child is involved in uh sports and after school things but you come around on tax season and you want some money i have no respect for deadbeat parents. I don't. I'm a social worker and I'm telling you, I don't care how you feel about it. You had those children. You need to take care of it. And for you to be a man, Mr. M You're not a man. No, men don't do that. Men get 1400 Come on, y'all. Really? $1,400? An aid. That's a Band-Aid. To a bigger uh, uh, wound. People need financial healing. $1,400, that probably paid a rent help with car note and everything. Come on now. A real man ain't think, okay, $1,400, man, if I got to go out here and lay sod, if I got to go out here and do roofing, if I got to go out here and be a landscaper, if I got to go be a day laborer or something like, come on, bro, $1,400. To tell you the truth, some of these men today, not all of them, because we got some sorry women out there, but some of these men are sorry. They're sorry. And you women, y'all got to pick better. Y'all do, honestly. Honestly, seriously, because this man, Malik Halfacre, has had he has a, a criminal history. And when I was reading up on this, I said, well, I'm not going to go too hard on uh, Miss Moore because the police officer even said in another video on this particular case that a lot of people don't press charges because the system is broken it, everywhere. But he was talking specifically in Indianapolis. And he said some of these people like Mr. Moore who committed horrible crimes in the past, they're out, they're back out, released from jail. So if you do testify against them or say something against them, they'll come back and retaliate on you. So yes, Janetrius Moore knew that uh, Mr. Halfacre here had a criminal past. There's his other mug shot. There he is right there. She knew this man had a criminal past, but she was afraid to testify against him. And some of the other witnesses that he uh, committed horrible acts against were afraid because he was always back out. He, they let him out again. Y'all, be careful out here. Take care of yourself and each other. And also to you people who don't take care of your kids. And like I said, they're with grandma, aunties, or they're with the other parent. And you come around like a groundhog and you want money. You only come around during tax time. You don't deserve it. And honestly, what is $1,400 when you got to take care of a child? I mean, honestly. And yes, $1,400 will help. I understand that. But come on, y'all. Some people can spend $1,400 in 10 minutes. Especially when you have bills. 
and children to take care of. I'm out of here, y'all. Go off in the comments. Say exactly what you want to say. Again, my condolences go out to the family and friends of those victims. And I'm wishing Miss Janetrius Moore a speedy recovery. Peace.